Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ambassador Verveer, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, thank you again for coming here. And I have two questions. While empowering women economically is certainly aligned with America's values, it's also in America's U.S. national security and foreign policy interests because it promotes peace and stability in fragile states. And you've done a lot of work in Georgetown and during your time at the State Department as the first U.S. ambassador on global women's issues on the link between women's economic empowerment and national security. So I would ask you, in general, how does empowering women promote U.S. foreign policy, national security, and economic interests, and what role did empowering women economically have in Rwanda in terms of economic growth, but also post-conflict peace and stability? Uh, Congressman Engel, um, I think the, the connectivity between uh, women's economic agency and participation and peace and security uh, is one that is increasingly linked and one that we are recognizing uh, as critically important. And I know that this panel uh, had a previous hearing uh, in this whole area of women, peace and security and what their uh, agency represent. Uh, we know that uh, in those societies where the condition of women uh, is one where uh, they are oppressed and denied their rights. Uh, those conditions often are the first signs of increased instability uh, and potential conflict. And I often feel as though women are the canaries in the mines. Look at what's happening to the women and you will have a sense of what is to come down the pike if we have the vision and the, uh, the ability to, to look at those conditions and take them seriously. I think one of the most important elements as we, as we take uh, hopefulness out of uh, situations where countries are coming out of conflict uh, is to appreciate that you can have the best peace agreement, uh, but if the key issues that affect the people on the ground and one of the critical ones is their economic future are not weighed into those agreements and then are not executed in a recovery process, you're not going to have that long-term uh, sustainable peace that, that an agreement hopefully uh, would guarantee. Uh, and in a place like Rwanda, for example, there was a recognition, um, and while so many lives were lost, that women had to play a critical role. Today, they comprise some 60% of their parliament, the highest uh, women's participation in legislatures in the world. They are active in ministries. They are active in every facet of um, the uh, decision-making processes in Rwanda. And I think to some extent, whatever you think of President Kigali, uh, he has recognized that the empowerment of women has played a major difference in moving his country forward. Uh, in my testimony, I, I note um, one of the projects that I've been involved in, in uh, that included um, a private sector um, company, uh, Kate Spade and Company, which made a business investment in Rwanda specifically uh, for business results, but also to empower women. And what we've seen in the case studies that have been done on that investment is what a difference it is making, not only in terms of their business investment, but, but particularly in terms of women's economic empowerment and uh, social progress for those women and their community. So again, uh, the link between um, economic participation, uh, economic viability, opportunity, uh, and sustainable peace and the amelioration of conflict and the avoidance of conflict go absolutely hand in hand. Thank you. Let me ask Mrs. Iskandarian uh, this question. Um, what steps do you believe that the administration should take to promote the economic empowerment of women? How and why should they target women from poor rural communities just as equally as those living in urban centers that already have access to the formal economy or banking? And finally, what good does incentivizing legal and policy reform do for women from all socioeconomic backgrounds? That's a tall order. Um, um, and, I, I think and you have 18 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I think just to, to 
to make one clar clarifying point, that, that urban-rural divide that you mentioned, yes, um, one of the very exciting things about mobile money is that we are able to reach rural populations that are, are so much, um, that have been so, so excluded. But just because a woman is in an urban area doesn't necessarily mean that she has access to financial services. And in far too many places, we still see the formal financial sector has for example, very, very high minimum balance requirements, for example. There is a very strong sentiment on the part of low-income men and women that uh, the financial sector doesn't really want them. But I think for, for women, there's also this, this emotional distance, so to speak, that they really do not feel respected. Their, their savings are not necessarily wanted. But those banks that do make that commitment that do make that that leap into this new market um, find that women are, are really excellent clients. They tend to be the savers. The, their savings accounts are the, the stickier uh, savers. They are more willing to buy cross-sold products than men are. They buy more insurance than men do. Lots, lots of very good benefits. And so I think to whatever extent this administration can continue to foster that support specifically from the private sector. And as I mentioned in my remarks, I think there is a great deal we can do in de-risking. We've seen a number of the development finance institutions from other developed countries are providing that kind of support, first loss guarantees, uh, that first step into a market that supports a private sector player, but then as they get used to that market, they see that this is a good a good form of investment, um, that, that support can be, can be Lessened. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before I go back, I just ask for unanimous consent to enter CARE's written testimony into the record. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. We, Chairman. We go now to Eliana Ross-Leitonen of Florida. 